Hey everybody, Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard here. Uh, before I get into the review, I want you to introduce you to my new sidekick, Spumoni. Say hi. Uh, she is uh, going to be hanging around. You'll probably see her in the background and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, there's Spumoni. Alright, so let's get into this. So, obviously, I'm a nerd. I'm a Star Wars fan. It goes without saying. It's how we do. Uh, and I've been a fan for many a year. Uh, they have... Oh, I'm in the age where Star Wars has always been a thing. It's always been around. Uh, I watched it when I was little, when my parents recorded it off the of TV on VHS, as you do back then. And uh, I loved it. Um, uh, with the same... With the uh, prequels, I'm not a big fan. I do enjoy and earnestly enjoy parts of 3... Um, and even parts of one, two is complete utter garbage, and I can't stand it. That being said, uh, here's my Star Wars hierarchy, I guess you could call it. And remember, this is all opinion, but I'm sexier, so my opinion matters 10% more. So, my favorite of all time is Return of the Jedi. I think, I love the battle between Luke and Darth Vader, and it wraps up the series well. Return of the Jedi, followed by Empire Strikes Back. Then A New Hope, then Revenge of the Sith, then Phantom Menace, and then of course at the bottom, the piece of garbage of Attack of the Clones. And yes, I've seen both the um, Clone Wars movie, miniseries, and full series. I haven't seen Rebels yet. Uh, the uh, Clone Wars is alright. It's got some problems. For some reason, they still want to do Jar Jar you know, centered episodes. I thought at, by this point we all decided we all hate Jar Jar. Why are you still trying to shove Jar Jar down our throats? No one likes Jar Jar! So, before I get in the full hardcore review, I do want to talk about one other thing. And that is the hype machine for Star Wars. I love Star Wars, but even I think it's getting out of control. Some of the digital caution signs around my area even say stuff like, Texting and driving leads to the dark side. Like, it's officially gotten out of hand. I'm glad that everyone's excited and it's back. You know, it kind of shows who's not a Star Wars fan, so I can go, Oh, I don't need to talk to you anymore. Sweet. And, and it's kind of fun, you know, having all this cool Star Wars stuff around. But the thing is, we're getting a Star Wars movie once a year for the next five years. I, we can't keep up this amount of excitement for that long. Even I, during the whole year, was having peaks and valleys of, yeah, let's go to Star Wars night here, and let's do this, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. And then at some points I'm like, I'm so done with Star Wars. And it was just all year. Like, let's, let's find a good middle ground, and let's just kind of even this out. Like, let's be excited, but let's dial it back, like, three notches, please. All right. Review time. So the overall plot is that it's 30 years after Return of the Jedi, and the remnants of the Empire has, uh, you know, reinstituted itself as the First Order, not to be confused with New Order. And they're out to destroy the government that was set up after Return of the Jedi. And I think that's about as far as I want to go in non-spoiler territory. Uh, it's 30 years later. The Empire's now the First Order. And they're evil. And evil's doing evil things. Just go with that. If you like Star Wars, obviously you're already bought into this. So, since I can't talk too much about the plot, let's talk about the cast. So you get a good mix of new and old. Uh, Carrie Fisher and Harrison Ford do great jobs. Carrie Fisher's still so amazing in her role and just owns it. And Harrison's having so much fun with his role. Like they're just doing a great job and they're fantastic. So uh, not a lot to say about them. Awesome. So let's get into the new cast. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is bb 8 uh, I was a little worried about the amount he's being pushed on everybody, you know, the toys, and he's in every ad, and doing this, doing that, that he's going to be the new Jar Jar, and he's going to be annoying. 
I love BB-8. They do, they do a perfect job with what they need to do with him. And it's awesome. Uh, thumbs up for BB-8. He's great. Uh, then we got Finn. Um, I can't talk too much about him uh, out of spoiler territory, but uh, he does a great job. He fits where he needs to go, and he's exciting, and I love Finn. Finn's great. Awesome job again. All right. Moving on. <laughs> uh, we got Kylo Ren, who is dark and sinister and does some stuff in the beginning. We're like, holy crap, this guy means some real business. I do have a few problems with him, which I'll get into in spoiler points, but... He he's a good he's our new big bad guy for the trilogy it seems and he's awesome. Um, like I'll talk about him more as we get into spoilers. But Kylo Ren uh, is a good job. So I do have a couple problems with casting, uh, and the first is why is Matt Parkman in Star Wars? I'm sorry, actor who plays Matt Parkman, but. We spent four years of you giving us Matt Parkman face. You can't just turn that off and be in Star Wars. I don't care how many beards you put on. You're Matt Parkman. Why is Matt Parkman in Star Wars? It broke my brain. And like it totally just ripped me right out of the movie. And this is probably just me, but I don't care. Like He pops up like, fucking Matt Parkman there. Why is Matt Parkman there? And he's not giving us Matt Parkman face. That's what you do. And, you know, it's weird. You're weird. You can't be Matt. You're only Matt Parkman. You can't be in Star Wars. Oh, man. That was weird. It's just, just, just weird. All right. <laughs> and uh, my other problem is Daisy Ridley. Daisy, come here. How dare you? Daisy Ridley, if that is your real name. How dare you? You're trying to take the spot in my heart that's currently occupied by Kristen Ritter. She earned that spot. You can't just come in and be kick-ass and awesome and you know cute and British and say oi when you punch people. You just can't come in and take Kristen Ritter's spot in my heart. I only have time for one fake celebrity relationship. You can't just come in and do that. Kristen's earned her spot. You can't just come in and pull the rug out from under her. It's ridiculous. I mean, you're so freaking awesome, and you kick so much ass, and you're an <laughs> amazing character. No, you can't do that. I can only love one celebrity. All right, so the other part I can talk about without getting into spoilers is the cinematography and how it was shot. JJ is so good at this. And I know there's a whole effects team, and I want to give them credit as well. Uh, but JJ has just this great way of doing starships. And it's something they couldn't do in the original trilogy and even in the prequel trilogy. And what I mean is, it's something I even saw, I definitely saw in Star Trek, that he has a way of having his ships um, work within the environment. Like, you can tell that they're interacting with the environment. And it, you know, when you see a ship you know, flying around water, the water moves and you see wind coming through it. And you know, in, even in space you see stuff you know, interacting with the ship, like it looks like it's there. And that's something I've only seen JJ really do really, really well. And he do really puts that to work here and it's amazing. Like the ships feel real visceral and just, they're there. They're actually there. <laughs> And it's awesome. Like, you just imagine he built a real X-Wing and flew it. Like, it's great. And the way he shoots, you know, sets and, you know, the scenes that he has, it's just done really, really well. You know, A plus, JJ, you're, you're a great guy. I love all your stuff. Good job. All right. So, at this point, it's spoiler time. So, stop here. Or click my hat if you want to pass spoilers. And actually, here, put this up. All right. So spoilers. Spoilers everywhere. Stop here for spoilers. Or, you know, click to my wrap-up. And uh, so, yeah. So this movie's just the first Star Wars, right? This is just A New Hope again, right? Like, I'm not the only one that sees that. 
Um, there's a thing that people a lot talked about a lot when this is coming out is that JJ does greatest hits. Um, his Star Trek movies are the greatest hits of Star Trek. Uh, his movie Train Monster was just you know Steven Spielberg's greatest hits. He and um, I mean it's not necessarily bad. I enjoy greatest hits albums at times, so it's not bad. But he definitely you can definitely relate each scene, you know, to the original Star Wars movie. Like you got um, a person that has no nothing to do with the conflict being pulled into the conflict. You have a big space battle with a big death machine. Um, you know, there's a cantina scene. There, you know, it's just the first movie all over again. So that was, I guess, a little disappointing and uh, stopped it from being as great as it could be, is that it wasn't all new. It was obviously playing on your nostalgia, and I feel like that's easy, uh, that's seen through pretty easily. But it's still but it's still my nostalgia stuff. So it's like, oh, yeah, I remember that. It's great. So there's that. And the other part uh, that's really spoiler I'm going to talk about is Kylo Ren. So he starts off being super dark and sinister, and then he takes off his mask, and he's this fucking guy. I mean, he's it looks like young Marilyn Manson, and it like took me totally out of it. Like, you're not scary at all. And um, I think it's building up to something, so we'll have to see where they go with it. But as of now, like, they just shot him right in the foot with, with his look, like... Um, and even his voice was like just like a broken speaker. Like, uh, I mean, he does do some cool stuff, and he does kill some important characters, which I won't even say that in spoilers, uh, who it was. But um, he does so he does do some sinister things. But he really feels like he's kind of a bratty teenager again, and they're going that route. Uh, it might build up to something in n the next movies. Uh, but yeah, he's kind of, he even has like tantrums where he's just like smashing things. And it's like, that's, that's, you know, adult. Weird. Freaking Siths. Anyway, so the way this one ends, um, it ha it's a great springboard for the next movie. Um, I won't even talk about that, where it ends, but how it ends is just like, you're ready to go for the next movie. And the way it ends... JJ can't do greatest hits again, which is great. It's going to force him to do something new and something big. Um, and it's going to be awesome. I can't wait for episode eight. Uh, so let's move to my wrap up. So Star Wars, The Force Awakens is awesome. I enjoyed the hell out of it. It's better than the prequel trilogy. It's hard to say where it fits with the original trilogy because it's just like something I grew up with and I know so well. It's it's going to take some time for me to really meld where it's going to fit, you know, in my hierarchy. But it's still really, really good. I'm ready for the next episode. Uh, I'm really thinking, you know, the First Order is going to have to do something big and get back into the game. And we're going to see some new Jedis being trained. And this is going to be awesome. Like the next... Next episode is going to be fantastic. I can't freaking wait. So my final rating is, on a scale from to, I would give it a... So check out Star Wars. It, it is fantastic. And if you don't see it, then you're going to be a minority. Everyone's going to freaking see this movie. And if you don't like Star Wars, first off, why are you watching this video? And second... I don't like you if you don't like Star Wars. I'm sorry. That's how life's going to be. So I'm Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard, and until next time, hold on to your hold slots.